You know voters want to hear more about policy and what they will do in the future. Nancy Cordes, Major Garrett, thank you so much. And our coverage of the presidential debate begins tonight at 8 Eastern right here on CBS, followed by a live simulcast of the debate at 9. And then we'll have CBS's expert analysis, so we'll see you right at 8 p.m. Terrifying moments on the taxiway at Atlanta's Hartsfield Jackson International Airport when two passenger jets collided. No injuries are reported, but the smaller plane was badly damaged. CBS's Omar Villafranca is on the scene. A run in on the runway. Just after 10 this morning, Delta Airlines Flight 295 was taxiing for a trip to Tokyo. We just hit something on the taxiway. Uh, could you tell us what, what it was? Delta 295. When its wingtip clipped the tail of a Delta regional jet that was sitting on an adjacent taxiway. The whole tail of that CRJ is off. The impact almost took the smaller plane's tail completely off. When it happened, like, we all freaked out. We thought we ran off the runway. And then all of a sudden, it was a bigger plane took our tail out, and it was it was bad, man. It was bad. We were scared. Some passengers on the bigger plane, like Stephen Shelton, said they barely felt the collision. The whole plane vibrated. You know how when you hit a really deep pothole in the whole, like your whole vehicle kind of like bounces? It was basically that. There were no reports of deaths or injuries. Shortly after the mishap, the smaller plane's 56 passengers who were headed to Louisiana were evacuated from the plane. According to the FAA, the number of serious runway incidents in the first six months of 2024 have decreased 62% from the same time last year. Delta says there was minimal impact today to their operations. The NTSB is investigating the incident and affected passengers were rebooked on other flights. Nora. Omar oh, Villafranca, thank you very much. Tropical storm Francine is expected to become a hurricane tonight before slamming Louisiana tomorrow. Hurricane and tropical storm warnings are already in effect along the Gulf Coast from Texas to Alabama with threats of severe flooding, storm surge and damaging winds. CBS's Dave Malkoff reports from Houma, Louisiana, which could get a direct hit from this storm. As Francine gains strength, more than two million people in communities along the Gulf Coast are under a hurricane warning. We don't take this storm lightly because of the, the movement towards the east, which is closer to us. And uh, again, we're prepared for any emergencies that arise. In Morgan City, business owners and residents are boarding up and heading out, and gas station lines are getting longer, some even running out of fuel. You've been through a lot of storms. Yes, I've been through quite a few. Carol DePlantis is getting ready for Francine. She lives in Homa and is using sandbags to protect her home that is still under renovation after Ida, a Category 4 hurricane. And you're still not recovered from 2021, that was Ida. No, I am not recovered. As an essential worker in a hospital maternity ward, Duplantis can't evacuate. Her next shift is during Francine's landfall. Uh, we deliver babies even through the hurricanes. Born in a hurricane. This is one of the bios that we're worried about as the storm surge flooding pushes up into these communities from the Gulf of Mexico. The lieutenant governor assures me that the levees will hold. But, Nora, there are still some communities here that are under a mandatory evacuation order. Wishing them the very best. Uh, Dave Malkoff, thank you very much. So let's get the latest track on where Francine is heading. CBS Lonnie Quinn is here in the studio. Good evening, Lonnie. <laughs> nice to be here, Nora. The track hasn't changed at all. This is still going to be Louisiana's hurricane, even though right now it's a lot closer to Texas than it is Louisiana. I'll show you when you look at the satellite picture. It's about 150 miles offshore from Brownsville, Texas, but it is forecast now to make that arc and start moving to the northeast. So we now believe it's a Cat 1 as opposed to a Cat 2 making landfall sometime later in the day on Wednesday. Big rainmaker moving into the Tennessee Valley all the while putting rain down but losing its tropical characteristics the farther inland it goes. So the big question is how much rain does this system hold? It's a little bit weaker than what we saw yesterday, but the rainfall numbers are still pretty impressive out there. Yesterday I thought we'd be seeing 6 to 12, I've trimmed that a little bit. I think it's more likely a 5 to 10 inch range. That includes New Orleans. So freshwater flooding and some storm surge, of course, are the biggest concerns with this storm. Nora, that's the latest. Lonnie Quinn, thank you very much. 
Officials in Gaza say at least 19 people were killed and dozens injured today when Israel struck a tent camp for displaced Palestinians. Israel says it was targeting Hamas terrorists. The powerful airstrike left craters up to 32 feet deep. Meanwhile, Israeli defense officials are releasing new video of the tunnel beneath a children's bedroom where six hostages were killed last month, days before troops found their bodies. American Hirsch Goldberg Poland was among the victims found down there. That video was released on the same day Israel acknowledged that one of its soldiers likely shot and killed a 26-year-old American woman in the West Bank last week, a death U.S. officials are calling unacceptable. CBS's Elizabeth Palmer is in Israel and retraced the activist's final moments with an eyewitness. Aysa Nuregi's body was carried in a traditional funeral procession in the occupied West Bank, wrapped in the Palestinian flag. We went with Jonathan Pollock to see where she was killed. Like I put my hand uh, under, under her head to try and stop the bleeding. 26-year-old Aggie had traveled from her home in Washington to join Pollock and other activists. You see the two jeeps. They were demonstrating with Palestinians against the expansion of an Israeli settlement. Rocks were thrown. The soldiers fired tear gas and the activists ran into the olive groves. They're pointing guns at us. But the military was watching. At some point I noticed soldiers uh, taking over that rooftop over mm -hmm. there. And just looking at it now, it's a clear line of sight. That's a clear mm -hmm. shot yep. from up there to where mm -hmm. she was standing. Agi was hit in the head with live ammunition. Today, the Israelis said the soldier had likely been aiming at a different activist. But U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said that's no excuse. Her killing was both unprovoked and unjustified. Uh, no one, no one should be shot and killed for attending a protest. He said the Israelis have to make fundamental changes to the rules of engagement that led to the death of an unarmed young woman. There had been some hope, Nora, that the shocking violence in this region might stop with a ceasefire before the U.S. election, but that hope's pretty much died. There seems no political will on either side to make a deal. Elizabeth Palmer, thank you very much. Today, Ukraine launched one of its largest attacks on Moscow since the Russian invasion started more than two and a half years ago. Russia says it downed more than 140 Ukrainian drones in several regions, including at least 20 that flew over the capital city. A woman was killed, making this the first time someone in Moscow has been killed in a Ukrainian drone attack. The first commercial spacewalk is just days away after SpaceX lifts off with an all-civilian crew. But that's not the only reason this flight will make history. The details next. Kate made progress with her mental health, but her medication caused unintentional movements in her face, hands, and feet called tardive dyskinesia, or TD. So her doctor prescribed Osteto XR, a once-daily extended-release TD treatment for adults. As you go, we'll stay. Osteto XR significantly reduced Kate's TD movements. Some people saw a response as early as two weeks. With Osteto XR, Kate can stay on her mental health meds. Oh, hi, buddy. Osteto XR can cause depression, suicidal thoughts, or actions in patients with Huntington's disease. Pay close attention to and call your doctor if you become depressed, have sudden changes in mood, or have suicidal thoughts. Don't take if you have liver problems, are taking reserpine, tetrabenazine, or valbenazine. Osteto XR may cause irregular or fast heartbeat or abnormal movements. Seek help for fever, stiff muscles, problems thinking, or sweating. Common side effects include inflammation of the nose and throat, insomnia, and sleepiness. Your doctor for Osteto XR. Did you know there's a detergent that gets your dishes up to 100% clean, even in an older dishwasher? Try Cascade Platinum Plus for sparkling clean dishes, even on the toughest jobs. Just scrape, load, and you're done. Switch to Cascade Platinum Plus. Here we go. Consumer Cellular uses the same towers as big wireless, but then passes the savings on to you. Save your money for something else. Speaking of, I ordered us some Thai food. For unlimited talk and text with reliable coverage starting at just $20, call Consumer Cellular.
At least 10 large wildfires are burning across California as hot temperatures and dry conditions make the work even more challenging for firefighters. The so-called airport fire in Orange County exploded overnight to more than 9,000 acres. A firefighting plane prevented flames from destroying communications towers. Thousands of people have been ordered to evacuate across the state. SpaceX's historic Polaris Dawn mission blasted off today from Florida's Kennedy Space Center. The six-day trip is taking four civilian astronauts, including billionaire entrepreneur Jared Isaacman, about 870 miles from Earth, which is farther than humans have flown in more than 50 years. Later this week, two astronauts will take part in the first ever commercial spacewalk. Eye on America is next with a close look at election integrity from the men and women from both parties who are on the front lines of our democracy. If you can't watch the CBS Evening News, you can listen. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, I'm Greg. I live in Bloomington, Illinois. I'm not an actor. I'm just a regular person. Some people say, why should I take Prevagen? I don't have a problem with my memory. Memory losses is not something that occurs overnight. I started noticing subtle lapses in memory. I want people to know that Prevagen has worked for me. It's helped my memory. It's helped my cognitive qualities. Give it a try. I want it to help you just like it has helped me. Prevagen, at stores everywhere without a prescription. With bugs, the struggle is real. That's why you need Zevo traps. Zevo works 24-7 to attract and trap flying insects for effortless protection. Zevo, people friendly, bug deadly. Okay, here is your paperwork if you want to review it and make sure everything's in order. These factory floor mats are really as good as WeatherTech. You know, laser measure. <laughs> no. Nothing comes even close to laser-measured WeatherTech floor liners. They offer the ultimate protection, front, back, and even up the sides. For a full line of premium American-made products, order at WT.com. Nothing protects like WeatherTech. Let's get started. Bill, where's your mask? I really tried sleeping with it, everybody, but I'm done struggling. Now I sleep with Inspire. Inspire? Inspire is a sleep apnea treatment that works inside my body with just a click of this button. A button? No mask? No hose? Just sleep. Yeah, but you need the hose, you need the air, you need the... Inspire, sleep apnea innovation. Learn more and view important safety information at inspiresleep.com. Okay, Limu, you said it. Then as I spike it, I'll tell them how Liberty Mutual customizes car insurance so they only pay for what they need. Got it? Did you get that? Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Series. Wait a minute. Tom, is that you working the camera? Keep leaning out of your close up. <laughs> CBS Mornings. Your morning routine just got better. Kamala Harris and Donald Trump get ready to meet for their first debate tonight. We can count on the issue of election integrity to come up, especially as the former president continues to make false claims that the last election was stolen. In tonight's Eye on America, CBS's Major Garrett speaks with election officials in battleground states from both parties. They speak with one voice about their stress and anxiety and conviction that our elections are conducted freely and fairly. Today Election officials from seven battleground states convened in Atlanta last week. Speeding everywhere. We met four of them. One Democrat. Jocelyn Benson, and my title is Michigan Secretary of State. 
and three Republicans. Seth Bluestein, City Commissioner of Philadelphia. Bill Gates, and I'm a member of the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors. I represent District 3. Gabriel Sterling, Chief Operating Officer of the Office of Secretary of State, Brad Raffensperger, State of Georgia. This year's election fills you with... Joy. Hope. Excitement. I feel it should be joy, but there is some angst. <laughs> Why? The biggest thing I worry about is the possibility of violence. We're daily receiving threats, whether it's through voicemails, emails, social media, or in person. You personally? Oh, yes, and it's escalating. And they're all rooted in lies and misinformation, which is always very disappointing and sad, but at the same time, it's real. This has unfortunately become a way of life. Bill Gates has spoken openly about his need for therapy in the face of hostility driven by election denialism. We've invested as a board in metal detectors, in fencing, in cameras. I wish we didn't have to do this, but we do. And how are you doing? I'm doing well. I've gone and gotten the support that I need, and I'm feeling great. Georgia now gives every poll supervisor a direct line to report trouble to authorities. It lets us know what it is. Is it somebody yelling at people in the parking lot, or is it somebody with a gun? Voters say to me, I'm afraid that all these illegals are going to vote. You know, I understand the fear, but it's an unfounded fear. We're just not seeing it in any real numbers. This is a boogeyman. This is not something that people should be concerned about. If you could, with a magic wand, dispel one piece of election-related disinformation, what would that be? That there are magical ballot drops in the middle of the night. That window of time from when the polls close until the networks are able to call the race is really where that window of misinformation can spread. For me, it would be the uh, conspiracy theory that our tabulation machines are connected to the Internet. They're not. It has all gone too far. After the 2020 election, Gabriel Sterling chastised fellow Republicans for inciting unrest with election-denying rhetoric. I think that threat remains viable. For 200 years, the loser accepting the outcome and coming back to fight again in two to four years was the way the system works, and we all accepted it. We have to get back to that being the normal way of dealing with elections. We've now endured four years of that same rhetoric, and that's why I think all of us do feel a little bit of a heightened state of anxiety going into this cycle, that we could see that rhetoric transform into violent acts in the weeks ahead, and we all have to brace ourselves for that. I continue to be disappointed by many people in the Republican Party, elected officials, who continue to be silent in the face of these threats. We cannot normalize threats of violence against anyone, but particularly those people who are literally running our democracy. A sadly necessary plea for a nation to return to itself. For Eye on America, I'm Major Garrett in Atlanta. And we thank them for their service to our country. We'll look ahead to tonight's high stakes debate and what could be the only face to face meeting between the two candidates. That's next. This portion of the CBS Evening News is sponsored by Satiktu. Find it at satiktu.com. I use Febreze Fabric Refresher every day to make my home smell amazing. On my bed, my couch, my jacket or jeans, in between washes, even shoes. Febreze doesn't cover up odors with scent, but fights them and freshens. Over 1,000 uses. Febreze Fabric Refresher. Hey, I'll give you $574 if you switch. For an ice cream? Okay. 
So what about $574 for switching your home insurance to Allstate? Tempting, but that's way too much of a hassle. Actually, it's not. Allstate can handle the switching for you. Just call them. But it's easy and I could save? And you get Allstate. <laughs> like a cherry on top. Oh, you brought your own. Check Allstate first and you could save hundreds. You're in good hands with Allstate. This is what joint pain looks like when you keep moving with a leave. Just one Aleve, 12 hours of uninterrupted joint pain relief. Aleve, strength to last 12 hours. Why did we choose Safelight? We were loading our SUV when crack. Safelight came right to us, and we could see exactly when they'd arrive with the replacement we could trust. Schedule free mobile service at safelight.com. Safelight repair, Safelight replace. Returns October 14th, part of CBS Premier Week on CBS. Here's another look at the National Constitution Center in Philadelphia, the site of tonight's presidential debate between Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump. This will also be the first time the two candidates have ever met. Election Day is now 56 days away. CBS News special coverage begins at 8 p.m. Eastern, followed by the live debate simulcast and then our expert analysis. And that is tonight's CBS Evening News. I'm Nora O'Donnell in New York. We'll see you back here for the debate. Are you finding bathing and bathroom business has gotten more difficult? Bad hips, bad knees can pose a problem. Just getting up and down can be risky. There is a simple, affordable solution. In just a day or two, you can have a beautiful new walk-in shower, safe and easy to care for with grab bars, a handheld shower, and a seat if you like. Set an appointment with one of our designers to plan your new bath. Better products at lower prices because we care. The Board Store. Okay, 500 deluxe garden gnomes. Wow. I only meant to order five. There's not enough money in my account for these. I'm going to get charged. Two things I just can't deal with, overdraft charges and garden gnomes. Mm. But your BMO Smart Advantage checking account gives you an extra day to avoid an overdraft fee. Nice to see a bank cutting people some slack. Oh, mistakes happen, and we give you time to correct them. So you don't like gnomes, huh? What about that one? <laughs> That one I like a lot. BMO. First Warren Weather on News 8 Now. Right now at 6, appeal denied. A 2022 murder case will stay in adult court. And a special guest will be attending the local Democrats' pre presidential debate watch party. Watching WKBT Lacrosse. This is News 8 Now at 6. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us for News 8 Now at 6. I'm Ken Kozarowski. And I'm Emily Brown. The teenage boy accused of killing 10 year old Lily Peters will be tried as an adult. That ruling handed down this morning by an appeals court. The now 16 year old suspect, known only as CPB, is accused of killing and sexually assaulting Peters back in April of 2022. In January of this year, a Chippewa County judge ruled the case would stay in adult court. In February, the suspect's attorney appealed that decision. The suspect faces charges of first-degree intentional homicide and first-degree sexual assault. 
A La Crescent man is in custody after leading police on a multi-state chase in a stolen vehicle. Police say 44-year-old Matthew Davis stole an unlocked and still running truck from the La Crescent Quick Trip Monday morning. Davis went over the Cameron Street Bridge into Wisconsin, then turned against traffic on the one-way bridge to lose the police. He headed back to Minnesota onto I-90 until police used spike strips to eventually stop him near the Winona exit. Davis is now held in Houston County Jail.